Well, well, what has the cat dragged in today? It's a video tutorial on stealth games. So in this video, we're going to get our test level set up, plus a couple of other just sort of miscellaneous things set up here in the editor. As far as windows go, I would highly recommend having the lighting window open. It's always very useful to be able to just real quick pop in here and hit generate lighting. Uh, in case the lighting breaks, as it frequently does in the uh, editor, I have noticed. Um, project settings is always good to have open uh, for references to the input manager, and we will need to be messing around with the tags uh, and layers. Actually, just the tags. Uh, we will be messing around with that. Uh, the animator window we will open up a little bit later, but uh, we will be working out of the animator window. And the grid and snap window, which I've not shown that one before, but I will show where to open that window up here in a moment. So those are the windows that we'll be using. Oh, and I almost forgot, even though it's up, navigation. Again, I will show you where that window is when we get there. Um, but we'll also be having the navigation window up at some point. All right, so for setup, the first thing I'm going to do is create some of the folders that I know I'm going to want to store stuff in. Again, for this small of a project, is this really necessary? No, but it's a good habit to have. So I know I'm going to prefabs. Thank you very much. I'm going to need a prefabs folder. I am going to need a materials folder because we're going to create our own materials again, much like what we did with the Plinko project. I am going to want a scripts folder to hold all those lovely juicy C sharp scripts. And then I'm going to have an animation folder where I am going to actually no, we'll call this the animators folder because that's where we're going to have our animator controllers. And that pretty much handles it for the folder setup. So let's get a test scene set up. Now, in the previous two projects that I've done in this particular intro sequence, we haven't really had the need of a test scene. It's just, here's the scene, that's it. In this case, we've got a bit more of a complicated setup. So rather than trying to debug in a proper level, we're gonna to wanna to create a test scene that will have all of the elements in it for us to be able to easily test the functionality of our, uh, of our setup, of our game. So I am going to immediately create a new scene because I do not like working out of the sample scene. And I'm going to save this out into my scenes folder and I am going to call this the test scene. First thing I'm going to do is construct the level. And for that, we're going to use the Polygon Starter package. So I'm going to go into the Polygon Starter folder. I'm going to go into Prefabs. And there's a lot of fun stuff in here, but we're only going to use a few little things out of here for our test level and the main level. And the main thing is this SM Polygon Prototype Buildings Floor 5x5. That's what we want to grab. So I am just going to toss that into the scene. Uh, check your transform. Make sure it says 000 for the position. If it does not, click on the little ellipse and reset the transform because we definitely want this little piece here to start in the center of our scene. Now, I don't want to have to drag that in every time that I want to create a new one. So I am going to use control D for duplicate to duplicate out these pieces. Now here's where we run into a placement issue. If I just use the handles or I use the uh, XZ planner handle here and try to position these, attempting to position this just right so that they perfectly line up is going to be an absolute living nightmare. I don't want to do that. That is where our grid and snap window comes into play. To open this window up, I'll go ahead and close this out. You go into edit, 
and grid and snap settings. The reason why it's not over here in window is a holdover from older Unity versions. This is where grid settings used to be in older Unity versions. That's why it's here instead of in Windows. So grid and snap settings. And as you saw, I generally prefer to keep this docked down here. So I grab the tab itself, drag it down, and squoosh it down a bit because it doesn't need to be that big. All right, we have two important sections here. We have the world grid, which determines these squares, and we have the increment snap. So if I change the world grid to say five, you can see the squares have changed. If I change it to one, I've got a whole bunch of little squares. I have this set to 2.5 because that is the half size of these large tiles. Remember, five by five, five units by five units. Now the increment snap tells me how, when I, when I do a snap drag, in what increment will it snap to? 0.5 is probably a little excessive. I am going to change that, or 0.25. I'm gonna change that to one. And how I snap drag is I press and hold control while I drag this out. And now it's snapping. Now there is a slight issue here. Now you can see that I can't, oops, wrong angle. I can't get this to perfectly line up with anything. It almost perfectly lines up, but it's still just that ever so slight bit off. When you control drag something, it's not going to snap it to the grid, so to speak. You'll notice that my position has little tiny bits of error in the X and the Z. To fix this, I can come down here, align selection to grid, all axes. So I'm going to click on that and it will snap your position values to the nearest increment of your world grid. And now I can control drag and this will perfectly line up with the other tile. Now, what I'm going to do for the level here is I am going to control D, duplicate, drag out a three by three section of flooring. And in case you're curious, I was doing a control left click to do the multi-select there. So a three by three section is plenty because remember, this is a test level. What do I need to test? I need to test my player character's ability to move. I need to test my player's character's ability to touch the goal and win the game. And I need to test the enemy's ability to detect the player properly, as in not detect through a wall and chase the player. I don't need a lot of space to do all of this. So a nice little three by three section, because I can put the player in this tile, the enemy in this tile, the goal in this tile, wall in between, and call it a day. So what I'm gonna do next, well, let's create that wall. So the what I'm gonna use for the wall is I am going to use, here we go, prototype building block one by one. So this is a one by one by one unit block. I'll drag that in. Doesn't necessarily have to be snapped to the grid, but I'm gonna go ahead and snap it to the grid anyways. I am going to duplicate this out. Control left click drip crossed and then duplicate and drag it up. Now I don't need more than a two meter high wall. And I suppose I could have also just simply had one and scaled it so that the 
z component was 5 and the y component was 2. That would have worked just as well. To demonstrate that, I'll just pop this one over here. And uh, let's see here, scale, z5, y2. That would also work. Six of one, half dozen of another. I'm fast, I'm just comfortable enough with the duplication that it doesn't matter for me. Now I need to place the character and the enemy. For that, let's see here, where, ah, characters right there. So there's a characters folder. And inside here, we've got character female, who I'm going to use for the player. It's going to drag her in, plonk her down. And then the character male, plonk him down on the opposite side of the wall. Now, everything's blue at the moment. I've got blue floor, blue wall, and blue characters. That might get a little bit interesting to try to visually tell everything apart. So if we go back to the Polygon Starter folder, there's a Materials folder. Inside the Materials folder, we have this mat, one, two, three, four. These are the different colors that we have available. Mat one is the standard blue. Mat two, ahem, Unity, thank you. Mat two is red, so I'll give my character red hair. Mat 3 is gray. I can give the male character a gray body. And then Mat 4 is yellow, and I'll give him yellow hair. And actually, I probably should have the female character, um, not with a gray body, we'll give her a bright yellow body. There we go. Again, I'm look, just looking for com visual contrast here. Not necessary by any stretch of the imagination, but it gives a little bit of visual contrast. And so now I'm behind a wall. This gives me an easy way of testing detection or the lack of detection through a wall for the enemy. Uh, it gives me plenty of room to be able to walk around. And I can place the chicken right over here. So I'm going to go into the mesh tint free chicken. I'm going to go into prefabs. And there it is, Tomb Chicken. Plonk him down. And relatively speaking, it seems like a bit of a tiny chicken. Well, I mean, I guess chickens are supposed to be tiny, but I want a nice big chunky chicken. So there we go. I'm going to bump the scale up to two uh, to make the chicken nice, big, and noticeable. And there we go. We have our test scene quick little bit of cleanup because this will actually be important. I am going to put all of my level pieces of the actual geometry of the level into its own sub game object. Again, using game objects as folders. So I'm going to do a control shift in to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this underscore level. Again, reminder, the underscore is nothing special. That is my naming convention to let me know that this game object is being used as a folder. And I am going to take, make sure that I am not getting any of the characters. Okay, yep, that's buildings. Okay, dump all of those into level. Now, one thing I'll do when I'm like doing things like this after the fact is I'll select the folder and I'll turn it off. I, how did I miss a cube? Where are you? There you are. Nope, not female. And that's precisely why I check. So everything on, everything off. Yep, okay, I grabbed everything. That's going to be an important step for later. And that's it. That's the test scene. Save it. And now we are ready to go for working on getting our animation set up, which should go pretty gosh darn quick. As always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down, and I'll see you in the next video.